Good afternoon, my name is Tony, and on the behalf of all the teachers, thank you for joining us here today. My topic is 5G UR LLC. So this monster acronym is of course Ultra Reliable Low Latency Communications. And the topic is Technology for Transforming Verticals. So in the first slide I show you my view of this familiar 5G triangle. So what is the UR LLC in the context of 5G? Most of you know the enhanced mobile broadband, and as Matti said, it's going to be the first one on the market. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. It's much more interesting what's happening below the surface. On the hand of the massive machine-type communication, it was postponed from the current version of 5G, so it's mainly handled by 4G or LTE or some proprietary solutions. The most interesting thing about 5G is the URL LLC. And in my view, most of the decisions made when forming 5G were either dictated or chosen to enable the implementation of URL LLC. Of course, it's not ready, so we have the foundation laid out on the release 15, the current version, and the development will continue in the future. So what is the main use cases for URL LLC? There are several, augmented reality, autonomous driving, or factory automatization or industry 4.0. And what is there like the typical use case is the wireless wire. So if you imagine you have two things communicating in a factory through a wire, like my head and my fist, good. So, and then you remove the wire. Can you imagine all the freedom, decrease of freedom that you have? So in this example, I have made this kind of simple traffic light example. So we are talking about factory automatization and we were looking at different technologies that can be used to build highly reliable low latency network. I wouldn't use VLAN. You can use it as a complementary solution, but I wouldn't rely it for low latency or high reliability traffic. For using LTE or some proprietary solutions, you can solve some of the requirements, but they are not applicable for all of the requirements. 5G, the radio interface combined with the 5G core is the only solution that can handle all the requirements. And in my opinion, there is no competition in view. So, if you want to ask more questions, discuss about possible collaboration, or just want to prove me wrong, remember to visit me at table number one. And in the last slide, I have just some additional examples of the use cases of your LLC. Thank you. And here we go. So my name is Sergey, and uh, here I'm the second speaker. The same. Thanks for coming, and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about intelligent connected machines. So I work here in uh, electronics and communications engineering. That's collaborative work with King's College London. And uh, most of the speakers today were trying to classify 5G for us. So we know that uh, you know the previous four generations have been mostly about connecting us, human users. But then 5G is mostly and uh, primarily about connecting machines, different kinds of machines. And then typically we split them in three use cases, connectivity for humans, for massive machines, and for reliable machines. And to me, it makes no sense because those use cases can come together all at the same time. So the use cases can be a lot of machines with high bandwidth demands, you know, requiring reliable and low latency connections. And here are a few examples, like massive AR, VR use cases, and then uh, collaborative fleets of cars, you know, uh, swarms of robots, and recently flying robots, nicknamed drones. And so for those extreme and stringent use cases, you need to do more than 5G. So what's beyond 5G? So perhaps, uh, and probably you can recognize the mock-up design of our campus, you would basically need a network to follow the actual demand, because as the machines move around, they create a lot of demands. So why not make machines return the favor and help provision wireless connectivity on the move, on demand, in those you know, temporary space-time fluctuations that uh, the user and the machine demand would create. So the network can bring more capacity, it can bring better coverage, it can expand coverage to the uh, farther away and, and hard to reach locations. And for that, you can use you know, cars and drones we heard about those visions of uh, automotive access as, as another paradigm. And then, of course, drone access is gearing up uh, heavily. So why won't we involve all those provisional and also use our own machines, subject to proper incentivizations like uh, you know, prizes and bonuses, connectivity discounts, into the network, make network more flexible, more mobile, on demand. And basically, that would mean a provisioning for average, not peak demand, and then 
moving the other demand across the network in a form of a moving network. So we call it moving network based on moving cells, and it's extremely challenging and important research direction in a sense that you would need to employ directional high frequency connections like millimeter wave, subject to blockage, you know, beam misalignment, in true 3D space, on a move, in large numbers, and that is our work, to combat blockage, mobility, dynamics, and make networks serve you in a futuristic but very exciting fashion. Thank you very much, I think I'm done. Okay, uh, hello everyone, my name is Jonas and I'm giving a brief talk about our ongoing research related to UAV uh, connectivity uh, uh, in the current and future uh, mobile networks, so basically drones and mobile networks. And what we've been now uh, seeing is that you all know that drones have become quite popular these days and this is also true in the industry side. And what's driving this forward is the chains of operations from visual line of sight operations to beyond visual line sign of operations. Meaning that we are separating the drone operator from the area where the drone is uh, working to a completely different uh, location and this of course requires means to control those uh, drones uh, from from those locations and and uh, what better way to do this is than through mobile networks and you can imagine all sorts of applications for drones uh, and I just mentioned here a few of them and uh, the key question remains how well these networks are able to serve these, these applications because initially these networks are designed such that the users are on the ground level. So uh, we've been, for example, during this summer, uh, studied this in, in one use case with an uh, electricity network uh, distribution system operator where uh, we were we wanted to bring connectivity to areas where we don't have that as much. And the solution for this was just to lift up the user that's on the ground level without coverage to, uh, with a drone uh, to above treetop uh, level and it's able to receive a lot stronger signals coming from a lot farther away, meaning that we're able to have connectivity uh, at those locations and distribute that to the uh, ground level. So, uh, the next phase is of course seeing how well 5G is, is supporting this and even beyond. Uh, so, we want to see how well these uh, networks are suited in, in all of these different categories, for example, how reliable they are, what this low latency brings to this, this equation, uh, how we are able to improve the uplink direction uh, throughputs, especially when we have a lot of video streams, for example, and the normal and, and heat uh, video links, and also flexibility supporting both uh, the drone control and data separately through uh, this network slicing. And for more information, please come to my uh, table number three. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Evgeny of uh, TTU and today I'm talking about the implementation of Terraria solutions for not faster but the other communications. So basically uh, let me be a bit rude today or even be your master for upcoming three minutes. So we are not making the childish things, so we are up to the big boys toys and big boys problems. So we are talking about the communications, ultra critical mission communications that are appearing everywhere, uh, like uh, oil and gas problems, like uh, health, medical things, like uh, uh, military things, etc. So all those guys, they need not only 5G solutions, but they need customized, super uh, reliable, uh, super predictive uh, communication technologies that we are building based on the terahertz technologies. So to satisfy our customers, so we are doing a number of uh, 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 moves. We are doing uh, things from the like physical layer up to the uh, application layer and try to satisfy them with the solution, not just with the, uh, some uh, uh, particular algorithm or particular uh, protocol. 
So uh, we start from the physical layer and we do realistic array-based simulation plus measurements. We do propagation models, MAC protocols design, higher layers algorithms and protocols. And finally, we end up in the system level models and prototyping. So on that picture, we, you see that we are uh, working with the significantly, uh, uh, with, with the uh, uh, equipment that gives us significant results. And uh, we are ready to provide you with those uh, uh, developments if you really wish. Thank you so much. That's it for today.